Good morning, everyone. We are here live in the Dolly Cam in Springfield, Illinois. We are in the Lincoln Room, and we are getting a backstage pass, and we're about to have a wonderful talk with Michael Canadas and see Rose Percy, and also see the other special exhibits that are happening today at the Red Cross Brunch. This is the first brunch that I have attended of its kind, and it is going to be fabulous. Everyone is wearing red. Good morning, Michael and David. Good morning, Good morning. Ruby Lane. Thank Hi. you for having us. Well, we're, we're delighted to have you. You guys have been you. working and so hard. Thank you, and we're delighted to have Ruby Lane here and Ruby Lane sponsoring this event. Mm -hmm. It's very, very special. Thank you so much. And along with uh, Bailey's Trucking as well, right. uh, they are That's another right. major sponsor. And so yes. um, it's so wonderful to see these major companies coming together to support such a wonderful cause that has to do with dolls and, of course, the Red Cross. Absolutely. So what is going to be happening today? Well, today we're going to have, of course, have our Red Cross brunch. And then we are going to have a Red Cross program. And the program is going to... Um, focus on the very earliest part of Rose Percy's 100-year volunteerism with the American Red Cross. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And, um, you know, just have, you know, sit and have a nice day and count our blessings with all the things that are going on in the world. Absolutely. And by the way, these are not new things going on in the world. No. You know, and Rose's 100-year um, span there have been many many times like we have today many times like we have today and it almost makes it a little bit uh more bittersweet i guess with everything that is happening just in the last week uh right. would you say with with what we're doing um fundraising here um as far as well, benefiting the red cross and again what's happening this yeah these recent changes will make an impact right on what we're able to collect and the nice the, benefit the nice the thing university. about this is this was planned way before any of any who knows Natural only disasters only were the planned. great creator knows. Right. Uh, but you know, Rose does have impeccable timing mm -hmm. when it comes to helping out humanity. Right. And we're going to do our part, our doll part. You know that that we do, and we're going to try to help raise awareness of uh, the work that the Red Cross does. Um, you know, you know, un unfortunately, a lot of nonprofits and charities are a lot of people's favorite bashing tool and it's nothing new to the Red Cross I mean um, Clara Barton I like to say sometimes you have to be Clara Barton tough right and you have to be you gotta tough, be tough and you got to do your job and and we're basically also supporting the two million Red Cross volunteers by being, you know, cheerleaders. In fact, the, we had scheduled today three representatives from the American Red Cross, local Springfield individuals, who were coming to make a presentation today. Well, at this moment, we have zero mm -hmm. Red Cross volunteers because they have all been uh, relocated to Texas to uh, help out. And Florida. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Next, Florida next. Florida yeah, and so Georgia. We, we will be reading a statement from them. And the thing they are, are not here today. you know, people don't realize that they are when we put on a, a small event like this, they are very grateful because most of the Red Cross, uh, people that work in the Red Cross for the Red Cross and their volunteers, they have to scramble to find some money. Mm -hmm. So if, I mean, that's a constant thing that they have to deal with. So by our doing this, where they don't have to do a thing and they can come and, and you know enjoy, talk about the Red Cross, they are always very, very grateful for that. And they mm -hmm. always thank us and say, thank you very much for, you know, we didn't have to move mountains to get to get, to get $5,000. Right. Exactly. You know, we moved the mountains for them. Exactly. So. You guys have been working so hard. David, what is your hope for um, what's going to come out of this weekend after all of everything that you guys have been working towards? Well, of course, we hope for a successful event. Um, Overall, I mean, in a successful event and a fundraiser is a large right. amount of money to put toward our cause. Um, we have um, a bit of competition from the last event because that was a record setter. Yes, it was. And, and what have, was the amount? Seventy-three thousand dollars. Seventy-three thousand yes, from the Charleston event. From Charleston. Okay. So we always have pressure to, you know, to exceed the previous one, but everyone's unique. And, but they're all so, unique. And so these recent 
disasters could benefit or they could hinder. It just depends. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but we're open. We're, mm -hmm. we're we're positive, and we're hoping for a really successful. Right, and we are surrounded by a lot of wonderful, generous doll people that um, always yes. pull up it's true. when needed. Yes. And the great thing is, we went into this event thirty-five cents in the in the black. So, so that's really great. So it's all uphill from here. Yeah, you. Uh, what you guys spent and what it looks like, you would never know because everything is just, we're gonna give our viewers just a peek at this wonderfully dressed Red Cross themed table that we have right here. What a magnificent treat. Just standing in this room, you can just tell something very special is going on. And of course, right behind this table Miss Rose, is the should, star. Should we go have a little? Let's go oh. have a little. A little one-on-one. -on -one. So if you guys are just tuning in, we are here live in the Lincoln Room with Miss Rose Percy. And there she is in her Red Cross uniform. How many uniforms does she have? She only really has one uniform, and that is her uniform. I mean, she, her school, her, she and she has, has her one. school uniform. She has two. Yes. One is her school. And her school uniform. And um, you know her real... I have to correct her. her yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your correction. <laughs> Her main uniform are her 18 party frocks because she's the original party right. girl. But I should tell you, Rachel, because you'd understand this. You know, the Marjorie Merriweather Post, one of the, the wealthiest women in America, was also a big Red Cross volunteer on a Red Cross fundraiser. And one time she said, you know, I just bought a diamond tiara that belonged to the Tsarina of Russia and I put it on and I was trying it on and she said it was so strange because I, I was wearing my Red Cross uniform with I the love tiara it. on. I love it. So I have to, Rose has a confession that sometimes she's too lazy to take her jewelry off so under her uniform she's got her amethyst and gold necklace which you can't see but that way she can be a, a quick change artist. We just love ladies like this. Uh, Marjorie Mayweather Post has one of the most um, beautiful jewelry collections oh, yes. that I've ever seen. I saw it at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Oh, it was yeah. on a it's, traveling it's exhibit. It's spectacular. Very spectacular. But Roses for um, a doll has something quite spectacular. We are surrounded by just this a little you, bit of her things. This I want you to see. This is just a recent addition to her collection. And this is one of the oldest absolute oldest pieces of Red Cross memorabilia that you'll ever see. Um, the actual Red Cross really started um, in 1870 in France um, during the Franco-Prussian War and this is of that period. So this is really an early, early piece of Red Cross memorabilia. It's wonderful. David, is Red Cross memorabilia hard for you guys to find? Has it been has it been a difficult to put all this no, together? Particular, I mean, and we have, in fact, just this morning we were gifted something. To, we we weren't gifted. It was Rose, Rose was gifted and here something is. from uh, Vicky, who's doing the Red Cross nurse display here, mm -hmm. the doll display, and which it's a, you'll probably check. It's a out. Red Cross but toothbrush. So, this is no. This actually just put in our hands. Oh, look at no that! Oh, it's wonderful. What is it made out of? It's celluloid. Celluloid. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it was probably made. You know, of course probably cast off of a, a piece done in ivory but these are things these are very very rare mm -hmm. and they're things that don't necessarily cost that much but they pack, important. They, they pack a punch emotionally if you if you care like for instance these all I think are very very special these are invalid feeders so if a guy was uh, burned or gassed in, in World War I, um, very, very ill. This is how they fed they them. They put mm. porridge in it, and they came in all shapes and sizes. And Did there's a lot of, if you're a sensitive person, there's a lot of drama, human drama in those, those feeders. Well, these objects, it's hard to um, imagine and, and look at and remember, but also it is so important to remember. Absolutely. and then. In these times, too, you know, as some people like to criticize the Red Cross and the Red Cross volunteers, this is a Red Cross helmet. They, all the people that volunteer for the Red Cross, 
put themselves in harm's way. Mm -hmm. This is a World War I helmet. Yeah. Today is no different. Today is no different. And so, you know, when you stop and think about that, you had to have that because you didn't know if you were working in a hospital, if, uh, for instance, in World War I, the Germans did not care if you were in a, a Red Cross hospital, they would bomb you. Mm -hmm. And on the roofs of Red Cross hospitals, there's the cross. Internationally, people have always known that's a no-go. You don't, you don't attack the Red Cross because it might be your Red Cross or you might have your soldiers. So they were all, all the nurses and the orderlies, and they all were in harm's way, just as our volunteers are today going to you know flood zones and, uh -huh. and dealing with rescue. And, and we've already lost first responders from this latest um, you know, disaster. disaster. When, disaster. Did, uh, when did the Red Cross start? Well, the, the original Red Cross started by, was started by a Swiss man during the um, um, Crimean War. And he saw the incredible waste of life on the battlefields and people just left to die. And he started the Red Cross, Swiss Red Cross. And the, the Red Cross flag is actually um, Swiss. based on the Swiss, Swiss flag. Mm -hmm. yes. And then it once, um, and at that same skirmish you had Florence Nightingale who revolutionized nursing in, as we know it. And so it just blossomed. And then the United States Sanitary Commission, which is basically our earliest version of the Red Cross, which is where Rose comes from, that morphed eventually into the Red Cross. But um, Clara Martin is the founder of the American Red Cross. But it actually, the movement started in France in 1870. She happened to be in 18, 1870 in France and there was the Franco-Prussian War, and they mobilized, and they got an old rickety cart, and they painted a Red Cross on it, and the rest is history. The rest is history. But it, one thing that is interesting about United States Sanitary Commission and the Red Cross, the Sanitary Commission closed, I think in 1887, and soon you had the Red Cross. So it's, it's been a continuation. Yes. David, we just had somebody in the UK say, I love it, it feels like I'm there, but they're in the UK and they're not here. Mm -hmm. How can they help? How can they help with what we are doing this weekend? What's interesting, we do have UK. some visitors from the UK here. And we have one oh, how attending fabulous. from Switzerland and two from England are, are here. They've made the trip for this that is event. Amazing. And they'll be here at the brunch too. They can help by just donating, I guess. Mm -hmm. They can donate their local And you know what? One thing I'm going to... Um, here's, here's, here's a wonderful slogan that everybody could... And it's, the American Red Cross, our boys need socks, knit your bit. Yes. Which meant that you were expected to knit every free minute that you had mm -hmm. socks. And... If you think about it, if everybody just knitted their bit, <laughs> did their thing, right? You know, if you can donate five dollars, do it. Do it. Right. You know, it all counts. Yeah, it but this is my new slogan: <laughs> knit your knit bit. your bit. In other words, mind your own business <laughs> and do your and thing. do your thing. <laughs> I love it. So we, if you guys are tuning in, we are here live in the Lincoln Room at the Rose Percy uh, weekend, but we are here for the Red Cross brunch. And I should introduce you to this little fellow. This is a, a World War I doll, paper mache French, and he's to represent our Aussie friends. And they were our allies during uh, World War I and served with great honor. And this is, a, this is one of the things that is a very emotional piece. A lot of people don't realize that the Red Cross did many, many things. But one thing that they did do was deliver personal effects back to the family. Oh. And that is a personal mm. effects bag. Wow. And in that is a, um, a toiletry set for a man mm. that still has greasy kid stuff from the 1940s still there. Wow. And we won't clean it or do anything to touch it. It's, you know, it just gives you chills. It doesn't, yeah. you know, it, it, it you know, we're now the caretakers of this item. For this last event, we did create a revised edition of Rose Percy's book, which mm. was a souvenir for the event. The revised edition has an additional 50 pages, 
And in those 50 pages is a chapter devoted just to the American Red Cross. That kit bag is photographed there, and the contents are photographed as well. So mm. that's, it's a very, very poignant chapter. Is the book available uh, yeah. for people uh, who are not here well, to purchase? Be, of course, it's a souvenir here, but mm -hmm. yeah, there, we have a significant number of copies. Made, okay. So there will be okay. available so, and you can, They can come to, you know, go to our website and find it At there. some point. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not there yet. It's not okay. there yet. We just picked it up. Because you, <laughs> you guys get it the exclusive on yeah. it. Right. Oh, we're and, 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 you know, the, we do also collect, this is an original uh, Red Cross poster, and these, it's in really nice condition. Look at these are these are printed on very cheap paper mm -hmm. because it was meant to be posted in po um, uh, post offices, public places, just glued onto the wall. And um, Woodrow Wilson, which is an underrated president, and he created the Junior Red Cross, and he he demanded it. And the reason he could demand the Ameri the the Red Cross to create a junior program. Every president of the United States, whenever when they're elected, are automatically the president of the Red Cross. A lot of people don't realize that. Mm. Honorary. Honorary president. And the reason for this this really close relationship, if you're the president of the United States and your general Pershing needs 25 circus tents and you don't want to deal with the red tape of the government, you call the Red Cross and they get it for you. Oh, I love so okay. a lot of people don't know that. So this is Rose's first Red Cross president. Oh. She then became the mascot of the Junior Red Cross. And are these more of her dolls? These are, this is the, you know, she's been piggish with her dolls and these are the, this is going to be she her. Came with a, she came with a very large quantity a large of, quantity. of nurse dolls. About around and 200 did, yes, or so? Yes, there are miniature furnishings and operating rooms yeah. and part of her original. So um, this now, kind of, we've, we've used them for fundraising and, and um, this now is the group that she's going to keep. But I should show you too, uh, one of our friends was here earlier this morning helping set up. And she said to me, you know, that doll's missing its a leg. Mm. And she didn't understand it's mm -hmm. meant to miss, right. be missing a leg. Because this is a World War I veteran. And I just think that's wonderful. I, 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 uh, when dolls come out like that, um, for children that are going through chemo and they purposely do not have hair mm. or the um, legs, uh, it's, yes. just, it's very um, good for people and children. We have a lot of people tuning in. A lot of people have shared our video. We are here live in the Lincoln Room with Michael and, and David of and, the Carmel Doll Shop. And I should also tell you something that I just learned because you know I'm a I'm just a I'm a, I'm a culture vulture. I'm a culture vulture, and I try to learn something. <laughs> We've all heard of a red letter day, mm -hmm. right? You're we at, talked about that yesterday in and the video. And this is a red letter. Look so at that. that's what it meant: is that you received. You'd say to your friend or your, your, I'm having a red letter day, which is a wonderful thing because that meant your son or your daughter was still, still alive. alive. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you guys are watching, share our video. We're here live with Rose Percy herself in the Lincoln Room, and we are about to have the Red Cross brunch that is happening today with all of the proceeds going to benefit the American Red Cross. Over here, there is a fun display of nurse dolls. And Vicky's going to come and talk to you about that. But I'm going to say to Ruby Lane, bye-bye. Bye. bye. Uh, we'll be seeing you in. later. Thank you, David. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. for giving us this backstage sure. pass. Sure. Come on in, Vicky. Vicky. Oh, we love your outfit. Good morning. Good morning, Ruby Lane, everybody. Ruby Lane Live. You're here with about a thousand people that are tuning in right now uh, that are very interested in what you're doing here. So tell us about this wonderful display that we see behind you. Well, this display, um, I started um, with this doll right here. She is uh, Madam Alexander, Tiny Betty. Red Cross nurse, and she's all original in the box, and she was actually my first Red Cross doll. In fact, she was my first nurse doll, period. And from that, from this doll grew a vast uh, collection 
of probably over five hundred dolls. This and is this is just what I call my Red Cross. Group. So these dolls are all yours. These are all my dolls. Oh, wonderful! And uh, there are some pretty unique dolls. This one is an Altbeck uh, Gestalt, early nineteen hundreds, and uh, she's got unusual brown brown eyes and her original mohair wig. This is what we call a mommy made dress, mm -hmm. but that was very common mm -hmm. uh, back in the day because uh, dolls often came naked. And what's also unique about her, if I can just pick up her skirt a little bit, is she's felt, she's not kid. Oh, look at that. Um, I don't think I've ever seen one like that. Her body is all felt, stuffed. Uh, so she's a very unique doll. And then this is a Vogue Toodles. And uh, she was actually named uh, War Nurse in, uh, March, from the March to Victory series. And she, I have her original box, which makes her just all the more special. Uh, some, this is a very early uh, doll. As uh, Michael was telling you, the French were our allies in World War I. And she is a French Red Cross doll. She has a uh, paper mache body, brown sleep eyes, and she is all original. Uh, this uh, paper doll is uh, from the um, Pictorial Review, August of 1918. And she is Dolly Dingle's mother. Look at that. And um, that is the, so rare. Anyone that knows paper dolls knows who Dolly Dingle is. And this, this doll was printed one time, and the famous artist, of course, is Grace Drayton. And how um, Mrs. Dingle came about was the subscribers of Pictorial Review were writing letters continuously about where did Dolly Dingle come from and who was her mother. And so Grace Drayton decided to uh, honor the uh, request of the of the subscribers and she made Dolly Dingle's mother. If I can, I'd like to show you the back of this because on the opposite page Look at that. What was who's who's in Women's War Work. Look at that. That is and so as, neat. And as Michael was saying, idle hands were the enemy. Mm -hmm. Any anybody that had any time or any funds or any scraps whatsoever were encouraged to uh, promote to get busy to get busy and help our help our guys look at this so the, the nurses uh, and today as they were back then are the women that you know, wade through blood and sweat and tears and just did the backbone the backbone of everything yes. and so what a wonderful homage to them for um, these beautiful dolls. This is the um, official uh, historical American uh, National Historical Society, Clara Barton. And, oh, she fell down. And this is just a little Avon doll. <laughs> she doesn't want to stand up. Um, but I, I would encourage all of our young collectors, mm -hmm. especially, to really look into Clara Barton because Clara Barton was a woman's promoter. Mm -hmm. She didn't take any guff from anybody. Mm -hmm. And she was a very strong woman. And back in that time, that was that was very unusual. And therefore she butted heads a lot, but right. she but she got her work done and she uh, helped the Union soldiers and uh, made ground nursing which was really the very first home care. Uh, so important. So Sometimes important. you got to butt heads to get things that's done, and right. that's perfectly okay. And these are your dolls as well? These are all my dolls. Look at this. If you guys are tuning in, we are here with Vicki, and this is her personal collection of nurse dolls that she has here on display, special exhibit here at the Rose Percy Red Cross Brunch here in Springfield, Illinois. This little doll over here to the side here. This is a Mary Hoyer and what's so special about Mary Hoyer was Mary Hoyer came undressed almost all of the time 
And then there were patterns that the mommies could make. And this is one of the original patterns. Oh, how neat. Of, of Mary Hoyer. And this is actually a Canadian Red Cross nurse. She is a plastic molded uh, arts nurse from uh, 40s to uh, mid 50s. And she's really unique because of how pristine she is. There's just so many special so dolls So many. Here. We have you know, I can't so even... many that our viewers are going to remember and that probably have like this Ginny right here. Uh, that's a Muffy. Oh, I'm sorry, the Muffy. This is a Muffy. Jennies are down here. We have Jennies right here. And now, are these the original outfit? Yes. Look at that. I, I don't How buy rare dolls. is that? I don't buy dolls or I don't acquire dolls that are not original. So these with, are all original? With the exception of my lovely... Red Cross nurse here. Did you hear that, everybody? These are original Red Cross outfitted vintage and antique dolls. This collection is spectacular. Absolutely amazing. There's a wonderful um, mine labeling right here. Uh, she is a rep reproduction, and she is the only. Uh, reproduction and or redress style that I have and the reason I uh, got her was because the original doll was actually featured on the cover of uh, I think it was doll reader but I'm not sure and I just fell in love with her and so I, I just had to have one and knowing that I would never have the original she's beautiful um, she is absolutely beautiful Vicki tell us about your outfit uh, this is an American Red Cross uh, outfit that was probably worn uh, post Civil War. Um, Clara Barton and nurses of the day wore street clothes, as you can tell from from the original doll there. Mm -hmm. um, but they did wear what's called the pin. We're going to move back so our viewers can see your apron. awesome outfit. The pin apron, um, and. Uh, I just finished this about it looks two great. weeks ago. <laughs> well, you've put a lot so. of time and effort into this. And Vicki, we have hundreds of people tuning in from all over the world. What would you like to say to them as far as what we're doing here this weekend and the Red Cross? Well, the Red Cross is such a, such a wonderful American institution. And we're grateful for Rose Percy being, being here. And, to represent the Red Cross and, and dolls in general. Mm -hmm. uh, what people can do is, like we said, no, no thing is too small for the Red Cross. And the Red Cross is one of the better donation uh, sites that almost 100% of the money go to the actual mm -hmm. victims. And with uh, the hurricanes in Texas and now, now mm -hmm. um, Florida, it's just so important to give blood. Blood is crucial at all times. As a retired nurse, I know that blood donations are always, especially in the summer and during natural disasters, a critical need. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself am, am an eight gallon donor and I've been donating since I was 18. Um, so that and your financial support and just calling a local American Red Cross and asking what they can, what you can do, mm -hmm. it could be as simple as serving cookies and juice. Right. At, it doesn't uh, have to blood be donation. money. You it can give your time, money, time and you know? effort. And ten cents is mm -hmm. not too little. Right. It's so important. Vicki, this is so special, um, and the fact that you're a retired nurse and this wonderful collection of dolls that you have here. Thank you so much for sharing oh, it with us. It's my pleasure. We hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful event here, and we'll be seeing you later this weekend. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.